Hey lovely people, it's your girl on Nana and this is a Nana Nation. If you're new to this channel, a very special welcome to you. Please go ahead and subscribe because you will absolutely love it here. And to all my amazing subscribers and me, you guys are the ish. I appreciate you guys for all the love and support. Thank you guys so much. So today we're going to be talking about this case. We have terrible news reaching us from Cameroon. Very, very sad news reaching us from Mancon in Bamenda, where a young lady called Ngumhilda has committed an atrocity on my people, a rule abomination. So the young Hilda is a mom of four kids and um, from all recounts of this story, this is a lady who had led maybe a little wayward life or maybe she was deceived, we don't know. But first of all, when you're living with your mom and you see your mom is struggling, you go and get pregnant one, you come and bring baby to your grandma, one baby. Your mother shouted at you, you say, okay. Only for the mom to be struggling to take off the grandchild, you go and get pregnant again, second baby. Ha! Your mom is like, you go show me one that so. I send you for school for go learn book, every day you're bringing me pregnancy. You did not learn sense. You went and carried that pregnancy and brought to the house again. She keeps bringing all these children. She keeps better to the man abandoned her with her mom a poor struggling mom child number three their mom won't her heal that how many times have i called your name this is too much now look at my condition you need to lock your legs together if you don't know how to lock your legs use protection hilda went and brought number four baby four children came and left home with grandma now grandma is struggling to feed her the hilda the young lady and the four grandkids you've come and brought on grandma and then hilda's sister also has kids so you can imagine the poor woman Poor grandma, she has how many grandkids in that house to take care of. They, her children keep bringing her children out of wedlock and they all leave it at home with her and now she's confused. So grandma was struggling to take care of the kids. You know, the heart of a mom is the heart of love. African grandmas now, she doesn't mind whether she has 20 kids at home. She will still wake up in the morning, cook one pot of concha, one pot of jollof rice and will be okay to raise the kids. That's how grandmas do in the village. So grandma is struggling to raise her grandchildren and all that stuff. Now it's July, the next academic year is going to start in September. So grandma called her daughter daughter and put her on the ground. Hilda, oh, next academic year starting in September. Now it's July. You have a few months in between. If you can hustle this year, I would like for you to contribute towards the fees of your children. If you can bring some more money, I'll bring the rest. I'll add and complete, you know, and we will contribute and pay the fees for these children. Simply because Grandma asked Ngondere to contribute towards the pain um, of her children's fees, she got mad and she started quarreling with her mom. That's the first source of her atrocity. She was mad with her mom because her mom asked her to contribute towards the children's education. So the second part of her frustration, however, was when she went to Facebook and started talking to this guy. She made a bush for her online. They were talking, they were chatting. The guy was like, I love you, baby, and all that stuff. So Hilda was like, ha, ah, me, bush for be. She was already seeing herself entering the plane. She was already seeing herself traveling. She was already in her mind. She was already like, hashtag touchdown Paris, hashtag touchdown London. What? They know me. They know me, Hilda. Anyway, that's just me being silly. I'm very silly, somebody. Yeah, so in her mind, she was already traveling. She, in her mind, she was already in Europe with a guy in. So as she saw the bush follower guy, she was excited, she was happy, she wanted it to work at all costs. So you know during the introductory phases of a relationship when people are talking, that's when you set like ground rules for your relationship. I'm not gonna take disrespect, I'm not gonna take cheating, I'm not gonna take this, I'm not gonna take that. The introductory phases of a relationship is when you guys lay down ground rules. And so uncle was laying ground rules, he told Hilda, oh, baby, oh, me, I don't want me, baby, mama. I wanna be that kind of guy where my first kid is the same first kid I share with my wife. My wife and I, our first baby together is gonna be my first kid. I don't want me a girl who already has children, I don't want me a lady who already has children. And it's okay to have standards, I'm not judging the guy. It's okay to have standards. Some people say they want slim ladies, other people say they want chubby ladies. I mean, lucky for we us but other people say they want babies who are heavy and thick and mighty so everybody has standards it's up to you nobody's judging you i'm not judging the guy for saying he does want a baby mama it's up to him so now you hear that they've told you that they don't want baby mama and you are a baby mama you're not only a baby mama of one you have one two three four children almost a volleyball team and somebody's telling you auntie i don't want me baby mama instead for you to tell him that ah okay auntie i don't i don't meet your standards okay uncle i don't meet your standards me i'm already a mom and i don't only have one kid i have four kids it's okay um keep it moving oh god just keep searching there eh? i'm sure there's someone out there for you but i'm not that person thank you for trying anyways good luck to you that's what you say like okay i'm not the person for you i have since you don't want to be mama bye bye you will go out go and try somewhere else a little okay old from part a little okay higher so that's what she would have told him but no she, in her mind she was thinking me i'm going to enter that plane i'm going to travel and this is my ticket this is my beyond avion so as she saw the guy she started cooking up for him the guy was asking i do you have kids she was thinking in her mind like hmm i have to make a way so i can tell this guy i don't have kids and he's not going to have any receipts he's not going to have any evidence against me 
so i don't know how hilda thought she could pull this off i don't know how she thought she could deceive this guy that she already has four kids so she kept leading the guy on they kept discussing and all that stuff see here ladies leave your truth though leave your truth with your full chest person no can't beat you they no call police for your matter leave your truth when you lie you get embarrassed at the end of the day there's ladies who have lied to men that they don't have kids only because they want to get married and after the marriage the guy finds out that she had kids before what is happening the foundation of the marriage is shaking the marriage is founded on a lie and how can he trust you anymore more. so you see that the lies you tell today will even be more devastating for you in the future you can lie to few people at few times but you cannot lie to all the people at all the time 99 days for the thief one day for the owner they must find out whether you want it or not so Hilda kept leading the guy on every day to be talking on the phone. Be how are you today? How is work and all that stuff? And she keeps playing it cool like she doesn't have any kids. In her mind now, she was hatching a plan. How do I bury the evidence before this guy catches me? How do I subdue, you know, my situation with the kids before this guy, um, you know, exposes me? So she went home and she listened to the devil in her head. You know, there's two voices in our head all the time. The devil's voice is always speaking and the Holy Spirit's voice is always speaking. So you have to know how to fine tune your ears to listen to the Holy Spirit and then shun the devil away so when the holy spirit was talking to her she was not listening the devil was like huh do you want to enter plane or not you want travel or not you have to do something or you have to do something and then the holy spirit was speaking like come on girl you have four blessings people are dying to have kids you should be happy be proud of yourself you are a woman you can be independent work hard get a good job get a business you can finance your lifestyle you can take care of your kids be a great mom and there's no telling that a man will not come and marry you in the future if you're looking to get married four baby mama is not the end of your life four kids is not the end of your life girl don't listen to the devil so the angel is here talking don't do that the devil is like you want travel or not they know you that you that the paris he that the lawns will they know you he that the belgium he that the dubai he that the abu dhabi so the devil is whispering ideas in her head and she so come to the devil she was like okay i'm gonna do this so she went and got some charms she went and got some poisons and then she mixed a couple of things together a concoction basically she mixed the concoction and then she put in a teacup with a teaspoon inside hid it under her bed so she has four kids and they're all living at home with her and her mom so the kids have gone out to play two of the kids have gone out to play see as god is safe picking them two of the kids have gone out to play you know how kids play in africa they go out and play with neighbors go out and play with the fellow aunties kids kids around the neighborhood they're running around and playing and all that stuff the other two kids her two-year-old and her four-year-old they were at home with her and then her sister also has kids in that same house so her nephew and her niece together with her own two kids four kids they were in the house so it was time for them to eat no time for lunch and she went to the pot dish the children's food put the food for all four kids and then she took the concoction she had mixed earlier instead for use the concoction for your own two beginners and since you don't decide she won't be evil she used the concoction on all four kids including her sister's two kids so the children ate the food her own two children slept on the ground and they never woke up my people you can imagine the heart of a man, the evil that is out here. A woman, a mom, you will carry them for nine months. The morning sickness, the pain, the discomfort. When you're pregnant, you cannot even sleep. I remember those days, you cannot sleep. You're struggling the whole night. You turn left, you turn right. It's an evapor, and a mash pa. So all that stress and she no think I'm, like it did not go through her mind for one minute. She was unflinching. She did not blink her eyes. She went ahead to lace this children's food with that concoction. And so began the chop concoction, quarrel, to begin them for flow. I don't even know why I'm speaking English. I'm supposed to be speaking uh, pigeon in this video. When I'm talking about technical issues, I'm supposed to be speaking in pigeon so that, you know, YouTube will not mm -hmm, have issues with my video. So that's what happened. The two of her kids, they fell on the floor and now all that to begin the quora. So you can see that it's like she put um, a higher dose in her children's food and then the other food for um, her nephew and her niece, that's her sister's kids, she put a lighter dose. So as the kids fell to the floor, her own two kids were already neutralized and the other two kids belonged to her sister. So they fell on the floor, they were crying, my told me my told me they were shouting neighbors came into the house neighbor they hello hear that what have you done hear that what have you done jesus so abongale so in my caro and copy's voice they were shouting like papa god oh, we never see the camera before oh, abomination abomination hear that why why would you do this to your kids hear that why a mom of kids why would you do this why would you what kind of wickedness is what kind of heartlessness is this hear that why so they were shouting no people were devastated people could not understand like who would be this wicked the heartlessness towards your own kids as a mom and towards your own nephew and nieces as an aunt you will be this wicked to children it means if your other two children too were in the house if all four kids were in the house she would have silenced all four kids because she wants to get married over a man you will silence all your kids and see why why would you be this wicked why would you be this cruel 
children that people are looking for we touch out here they cannot find people even go to the hospital people work all their life they gather money for over years to come gather money gather money they go and pay for in vitro fertilization just so they can have kids people gather money gather money they go and pay for surrogacy just so they can have kids people go all the way to go adopt children just so they can have kids you have four natural blessings that God have given you four beautiful children you choose to silence too not be even blessed himself by God say the other two kids went to school if all four kids were in the house, you would have silenced them all. You see how the work of angels, angels just carry these two kids like, no, you guys should go and play just at that point in time. I pray for you viewer watching me today. When they are looking for you to do you evil, you two, you go and stroll in Jesus' name. You will be missing in action. You will not be in their midst. When they are looking for you to do you evil, when they plan and they are waiting for you, God will take you away miraculously. Angels will take you away from that place. They will not find you in Jesus' name. So she had planned to do evil. The remaining uh, uh, concoction, the remaining poison she had in the cup, she put it under the bed. She was waiting for the other two kids to come so she would give it to them. So she gave it to the two that were there and they fell on the ground and all that too. So she kept the remaining thing inside them um, under the bed in the teacup, waiting for the other two kids to come. But thankfully she was caught on time. Her gram, her mom and aunties in the village, they came and saw the cup. They were shouting. They saw the cup under her bed. They didn't even know what was in the cup. So they were asking neighbors around, what is in this cup? Is one farmer in the neighborhood. Farmers know about herbs and plants and all that stuff. The farmer came and smelled the thing. was like, hmm, little a poison, little a this one or that. Started telling them exactly what Hilda had done to those children. Chai, things are happening, oh my people. Things are happening. Children, why not take them to the orphanage? People do that. They wake up in the middle of the night, they carry the kids and leave them in front of the orphanage. Or they knock the door of the orphanage, they wear their hoodie over their head, wear eyeglasses, cover your face. Knock the door of the orphanage, they open the door, you push the children inside, you run and go. People have been doing that. Put them up for adoption. There's people around the neighborhood who are looking for kids. Take them to the orphanage, put them on adoption, do something. Do not terminate the life of your children because you want to get married over a man. A man who will still leave you and go and be cheating out there tomorrow. Probably a man whom we don't know how things will go well with him. You can go with him tomorrow and the relationship does not work well. The relationship turns sideways and now you have to go back home. And you're not going back home to your kids anymore. News flash. You're not going back home to your kids anymore. So after silencing them to go marry a man, if the relationship now no work hard, marriage chakra like some marriages do, you, where will you go back to? No kids. Because you do not send them on vacation, no. There's no point some parallel vacance. You will silence your own children. So if the marriage no worker, you go back home now, you have double jeopardy. Double losses. You've lost the life that you bore. You've lost the life that God has entrusted you with. Having kids is not because you just want to have kids. It's something that God gives you. Children are not even yours. God borrows you a child for you to bring into this earth. For you to nurture, for you to grow. That's God's making. That's a human being. He created, he formed. When we hear things about women killing their kids, the first thing that comes to your mind like, what kind of woman is that? Was she mentally challenged? Was she okay? Was everything okay? For a woman to kill her kids, you bring forth this life. And then you decide to use your own hands to terminate a life you struggle to bring on earth. What is wrong with people? What is wrong with people? You can even see in marriages today, sometimes when women begin to have kids, some husbands complain. We've seen these things on the internet. Men complain. If you go and follow Joro, there's Joro Olumofin on, 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 on Instagram and all over. He's sharing questions about marriage people, all those complaints and all that stuff. You read some of the things on Joro's speech. Joro, help me, Uncle Joro. Since my wife has kids, she doesn't have time for me anymore. My wife is only about my kids, my kids. She doesn't think, she doesn't remember me, the husband anymore. Men complain that my wife loves my kids more than me. My wife devotes all her time and attention to her kids, not me. People complain about this stuff. That's the love a mom has for her kids. A mother's love for her kids is infinite. A mother's love for her kids is unconditional. You cannot put the price tag on it. A mother will give her liver to save her child. A mother will give a kidney to save her child. A mother will give her heart to save her child. A mother will give her brain if she has to, to save a child. Have you not watched in the news countless times a house is on fire where they fire them, um, you know, fire, uh, uh, um, 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 how they call them, I keep forgetting, firefighters, yes, that's the word, firefighters, they come to come help in the house and then the fire is too much, the firefighters, they retract, they run out of the house, they're like, no, it's too late, you cannot save anybody in the house. And the mother is like, you cannot save my kid, are you for real? The mother launches into the fire, she plunges into the fire to go get her kids. As the mom is struggling to go in, the firefighters are calling her like, auntie, don't go in there, you're going to risk your life, you're going to die, you're going to die from smoke inhalation. You're going to die from fire. The fire is going to patch and scorch your body. Don't do that, auntie. You're going to have third degree burns. She's like, these are my kids. I brought them into the world. That's the heart of a mom. You will give everything. You give your all for your kids to be okay. You will walk barefitted if you have to for your kids to be okay. You will go through the fire 
through the brimstone, through, 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 through lava for your kids. That's what moms do. So the firefighters are struggling to hold this woman and they don't go in there, the house is burning. She rushed into the house to save the kids and she got her kids. She stood from the window on the third floor. She shouted, anybody in here? The firefighters came and grouped downstairs. She was trying to send the kid, throw the kid or something, let them catch the kid. Now they had to put ladders and tops started climbing up, up. And then auntie from the window, from the floor, she was already dying. She gave her last breath to save her child. So she threw the child down and then the people down there, they caught the child. They have all these mechanisms they use and that's how that child was saved. A mom gave her life for her child, and that's what people do. You give your life, you give your all for your children. You don't take their life away. So you can imagine a young lady doing all these things for a man. <laughs> for a man, until you know men. Men will shock you. Men will shock you. You will do all these things, all these quote-unquote sacrifices for a man. And then let's assume that, uh, let's assume that her plan was successful. Uh, uncle came and married her. Uncle took her back to Europe. And they were living together in Europe. A few years down the line, married no work. You know, sometimes relationships don't always work. So if they're married no work and now, they go separate ways. What will happen if uncle tell you that he doesn't want you anymore? Go here, leave my house. I don't want you anymore. What would you do? After sacrificing your whole life, scatterbalancing your whole life, sacrificing your own kids for love, what would you do if tomorrow it doesn't work out? <laughs> that one not be fast road to, to depression, so. That one not be fast road to depression, so. Because that's what we call double jeopardy. You rocked your whole world, scattered everything, sacrificed everything for a man. And then the man tomorrow tells you, I don't want you, Auntie, go. I don't want you. Say terminate. Au revoir. What would you do? That's what we call double jeopardy. You've lost kids. You've lost the man that you were doing all those things for. And then you're just in the middle like, Papa God, oh, it remains a job for God, John, for Uvaruri. I cannot understand what is happening to me. Oh. That would be the next logical step. That would be the next logical step. After sacrificing everything for a man and he sends you away tomorrow. The next logical step would just be Uvaruri because what would you do? No one a job for God, John, for one time. What would you do? So this lady is sitting in jail today. That's when she's going to have a reality check. You know, sometimes when people react fast, 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 they don't think. Then now that you are in jail, you have time to calm down and think, Oh my God, Hilda, what happened to you? How did you let the devil use you this way? How did you get here? How did we get here? That's when she'll be regretting me. I went and bought poison for my own kids. So she will be playing on her mind. You'll be playing on her mind. She'll be thinking, Jesus, oh, I shouldn't have listened to the voice of the devil. And you know the devil is the accuser of the brethren. While she's in jail, regretting everything she has done right now, the devil will come and appear. That's what the devil does. His mission is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And now that he has succeeded to use you to kill, he's going to come and be playing in your mind, come and be gloating in your mind. I always imagine like the devil will appear to her in jail. <laughs> you know the devil has an evil laugh. He will come and appear in her ears again. <laughs> I fooled you. I deceived you. You fell in my trap. I wanted to use you. You fell in my trap. You did my work for me. You made my work easy. That's the work of the devil to kill, to steal, and to destroy. By the way, so he's gonna be like, I used you. You killed for me. He's gonna be gloating in her ears, even in jail. So the regret this lady is gonna be having <laughs> double drop at it. It's gonna be crazy out there. So um, we pray for healing. We pray for healing. You know, maybe she was mentally unstable at the time. I don't know. We pray for healing for the family. Hilda's mom is going crazy. She's in unconsolable. She is crying. Nobody can stop her. Her grandchildren that she loves so much. She is crying. The whole neighborhood is there. I'm um, trying to hold her. Grandma don't cry, it's gonna be okay. Grandma don't cry. Even the other grandkids who survive, they're telling her grandma is gonna be okay. Grandma is only crying. She's unconsolable. The pain, you know, the heart of her mom, all the love she had for these kids. I'm gonna put the video here so you guys can see the grandma. Grandma is crying. My treasure, my happiness, my joy. Those are her grandkids and grandkids. The love that um, grandparents have for grandkids is even stronger. So you can imagine the bond. Grandma is crying. She's heartbroken. What will Hilda do this? So family members are just that like, they are confused. They cannot understand how it happened. So Hilda remains in jail today, you know, awaiting trial. She's going to have a day in court. They're going to take her to court and they're going to sentence her. When we have updates on that case, I'm definitely going to come back and give you guys. So you want to make sure you subscribe. You turn your notification bell on so you are the first to be notified every time we post a new video. And to those who already have kids, be confident in the fact that you are a mom, you are a soldier, you're a warrior, you're a strong woman, you're independent. Go get a job, go get a business, establish yourself. Be comfortable with the fact that you have a child. It's a blessing. People are looking for children. They I'm telling you, people are looking for kids with torch. 
people are looking for kids through all means so be happy with your kids that you have be confident in the fact that you're a mom beat your chest you did that that's your baby you carry it for nine months it's not like the other ones who go and do things to their own babies and then they come and be saying i don't have a kid i don't have a kid but nobody knows the evil they're doing behind closed doors so just be happy that you have your kid be confident who own it with your full chest the man who likes you will like you on your kid the man who likes you will accept you and the kid a kid is a blessing at all instances like so many even get married to women and they themselves cannot father children but if the woman already has a kid sometimes it even covers the shame quote unquote shame i don't know why anybody should be ashamed for not having kids life happens the man who love you will love you with your kid and he's even going to be confident hey she already has a kid it means she can give me kids too i mean it's a whole new generation of men who want to marry women who have kids so before men were like i don't want to marry me get picking i don't want to marry me get picking but now there's a whole new generation of men who want to marry a girl who has at least one kid. That way they are sure that, okay, she did it before she can do it again. She has a kid. Okay, she can have the kid for me. That's what some men are thinking right now. And I don't blame anybody. I don't judge anybody. I'm just giving you guys the information. So it is quite unfortunate what happened today in Manco and Bamenda. Our heart, our prayers, our warmth, our love to the Ngum family. And you can see the Ngum Hilda. Her mom is out there, heartbroken. The mom is crying. My children, my grandchildren, my happiness, my love. So she loved her grandkids so much and Ngum has taking two of these grandchildren away and it's unfortunate and we just pray for healing for love for wholeness for completion in this family god almighty please console this family as they grieve and from whom she'll have a day in court i'm going to keep tabs on this case any updates i have i'm definitely going to come back and give you guys so with that i guess we've come to the end of today's video you guys let me know what you think about this topic in the comment section below what would you have done if you were in Gum's family what would you have done if you were in Gum's place the logical thing to do was to tell the guy i already have kids you don't want a guy who has you don't want a lady who has kids okay bye bye to you you keep it moving you go and search somewhere else that would be the logical thing to do so tell me what you would have done if you were in Goom's place tell me what you would have done if you were in the bush Polar's place and you know just let me know what you think about the topic in general in the comment section below i love you guys stay safe everybody if it is your first time on this channel please don't go without subscribing subscribe like comment and most importantly share the video so we have our communities educated about such topics so yeah as you make your bed so shall you lie on it I love you guys. I've said it like three times today. I don't know why I'm rambling to conclude this video, but <laughs> these are the struggles on YouTube. So yeah, I'll say it again. I love you guys because I do. So stay safe, everybody. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Will take away my treasure, my happiness. It is <laughs> in this life. This pity them, please. Mm. And I don't want to tell make your family is always happy. I miss everything about them. We used to play together. I used to carry her. We used to push through together. I used to, I used to smile each other in the market.